Hi guys, PJ here. Today we are working on an Infinity Q70 and we will be fitting a dashboard camera basically into it up onto the top of the window screen and we're going to be fitting it to the fuse box of the vehicle. Okay, now the fuse box on these vehicles, if you don't know, it is in your owner's manual, is located just here in the footwell. It's quite dark there, sorry about that guys, just open the door. There we go. Now you've got a little cover covering it over, like so, and the cover just sits there. Push the top tab down and pull the cover out. And the fuse box, like I say, just inside there, just in the in there. It's recessed, so obviously seeing it is a bit difficult. Right, to fit this camera into the vehicle, we are using a wiring pack it's like a, a fitting kit as such this particular one's made by next base which do a lot of cameras but you can buy other brands on the market they're all pretty much the same thing now in the fitting kit you get all this so this is the contents you get an fm filter sorry an fm or dab filter this is like a, a ferrite filter yeah so any interference on your radio this should help okay and this is to wrap around your power cable this being your power cable. On one end, you've got a simple negative connection which you earth to the chassis of the vehicle. I'll show you somewhere to do that later on. And here, the power cable, which obviously needs to go to the fuse box of the vehicle for an ignition switched power supply. That way your camera will go on and off with the ignition of the vehicle. The other end of this particular kit has got a mini USB obviously check depending on your camera brand it could use a micro USB or a mini USB such as this some cameras like Blackview uh, they have like a round power connection on them so you're going to need one Pacific T camera 90% of them do use the mini USB just double check just have a look at your camera socket and uh, make sure you've got the right one okay the other bits you get are fuse spurs as they are called a lot of older vehicles or commercial vehicles will use a full-size bayonet fuse such as this. Now, what this is, is basically a doubler. So you will unplug one of the fuses from your fuse box and push this into it. So in other words, where your fuses come from, these two prongs shove in. Yeah? And then what it does, it creates a socket here to put the fuse in from the fuse box to run the original circuit that that fuse would have run. And then this one here, normally a 2 or a 3 amp, this will run the power to your camera. Okay, so it's a bit like the main sockets that you get at home. So you plug a, an extension into a socket and then you'll have a trailing adapter with four sockets on the end. It's the same principle, literally. So the fuses quickly come out. There we go. So there's the fuse. Say you've pulled out your fuse box and then you plug this in. And like I say, you've got one here, it's just a normal fuse, look, nothing special about it. One for your camera and the other one for the original circuit. I'll show you what I mean when it's plugged in and how I find the correct circuit to use, okay? A lot of cars, in fact, I'd say 80% now use mini blade fuses, which is this one. It's exactly the same, but smaller, yeah? So you've got a fuse for your camera and then you've got a spare sock here for the original fuse that you pull out of your fuse box. You notice this particular one's got a a female bullet connector on the end which obviously connects to your male bullet power connector it just plugs in yeah now this ferrite filter I mentioned at the very start opens up and like I say you wrap it around near the end of your power cable this is to help stop dab interference on the end of it here there's two clips all you do is pop them open like so yeah so it's like a, a hinge yeah so you just pop them open spread the thing open it's lazy tricky doing this one-handed guys so apologize for that so open it up and then get the end of your cable like so place it through it and then wrap it around it like this there we go so it was opened up the cable goes through it, round it, and out again, and then squeeze it shut. And that's your ferrite filter. Without that, if you've got a dab radio built into your car, you will notice a lot of interference, generally speaking. Um, some cars 
in particular Mercedes, even with the filter on, they're very susceptible to dab interference. So if you put a camera in your car and you're suddenly getting dab interference, generally that's why it's a very tricky thing to cure. But anyway, onto this particular car. Now for the Infinity, uh, we will be using the mini blade one, which is this particular one. You don't need the larger one, so you can pop that out of the way. Mini blade fuses, like I say, fit to a lot of vehicles. Useful tools to do the job are this little array. Multimeter for testing your fuses so you know what circuit to use. If you haven't got a multimeter, one of the little screwdrivers with a light bulb in the end, you know, a little test probe one, so you can touch on the top of the fuse and just basically see if the screwdriver lights up when the ignition is on, okay? If not, use your multimeter, set it to 20 volts. Use the probe on the top of the fuse. You'll notice the fuses have got two shiny bits, metal, right on the top, look. Touch the probe onto the top of there with the ignition on and obviously see if uh, you get a 12 volt reading or see if your screwdriver le le lights up. If it does, you then turn the ignition off and test it again. Hopefully, that will be showing zero voltage or your little light will go off on your screwdriver, which means the circuit is ignition switched. Okay. One thing to mention though, when you are checking to see which fuse you're going to use, make sure you use an accessory fuse. Do not use anything from ABS or for airbags or engine management, anything like that critical system. Only accessory fuses such as 12 volt socket fuse, radio fuse, that type of thing. Okay. The other thing that I always do is use cable ties. Now you're thinking, okay, that's obvious. Well, not the way I use them. Obviously, you're going to be stuffing this cable up above your headlining of your vehicle, yeah? High up. Now, most headlinings are made of a fabric weave type stuff. And as soon as you hit a pothole, generally the cable will just fall down out the headlining and be in front of your window screen while you're driving along. Not ideal. So what I do now, and this is through doing many, many hundreds of these type jobs, is just basically wrap a cable tie around them in three different places and uh, use it as a little packer and then uh, it stops it falling out from up above the uh, window screen. I'll show you what I mean shortly. Obviously some snips are going to be handy, snip the end off your cable tie. Electrical tape, just to wrap the cable ties so they haven't got any sharp edges, you don't want them rubbing through your headlining do you? And this one is probably the most important, a plastic leverage tool, okay? Now make sure you use a plastic one and not a metal screwdriver because any trim that you need to pop off you will damage it using a metal screwdriver. These are plastic, they've got a bit of flex to them and they won't damage your trim. This one's made by Bojo, they're available from eBay, Amazon, all that type of thing. You don't need to have this brand, any plastic scraper will do, just don't use a metal one because you will damage the trim on your car, okay? You can pick these up for like a pound, so it's well worth having them, okay? And now on to the job. First thing we're going to do is prepare this power cable. So we've measured up our power cable, so we know where the camera's going to sit, okay, and how long the cable's got to be across the top of the window screen. Always leave yourself a little bit spare tucked up above the window screen in case you need to reposition your camera, okay? So just tuck a bit extra up out of the way. Wrap your first cable tie around where it's going to uh, sit to hold up above the headlining. Then space your second one out. Obviously snip the end off. And then space your third one out. And wrap in electrical tape like so, just like I say, to stop the sharp edges. Because it's quite surprising sometimes how sharp the edges can be on these. And uh, you, know, you don't want it rubbing the back of your headlining and making a mess. It's just a precautionary measure. You don't have to do this. It's just something I've done over years of doing this type of thing. And it does seem to help. Like I say, you hit a good enough pothole, the cable will be dangling down in front of your eyes otherwise. So do that and then start mounting your, your uh, cable up in the roof lining. Okay, so when we're on the roof lining, yeah, get one of your little cable tie areas that you've made, that you've wrapped your cable tie around, and gently pull down on the headlining. Normally on this particular model of car, there's a bit of a gap, yeah? Like I say, it's only a material fibre. You do not need to go at it like a bull in a china shop. Be very careful with it. Normally you can just put your fingers behind it and just pull it, just flex it enough to, to get your little block. There you go, that I've made. And just sort of tuck it carefully. In, like so. There we go. And go all the way along 
you will have a bit of fiddle when you get to the mirror area because you've got all this plastic uh, in the way and you've sort of got to go between it and across to the other side because we want our camera to be sitting here really on the on the other side of the vehicle and go all the way along go to this edge here and this is when you'll need your plastic pry tool so first up come down to the side of the dashboard here I mean I've obviously popped this one early because I needed both hands to do it basically put your trim tool in just sort of slide it in and lever and pop and this plastic panel just comes away it's on little clips look like so so just remove that completely yeah put it somewhere safe so it doesn't get scratched and then what we're going to be doing is moving the weather seal now this can be a bit tricky if they've not been off before they're a bit stubborn you basically just pull them off so pull yeah and then we're going to pull it off all the way up until we get to this top corner there we go like so so pull it off all the way down and it leaves a nice big gap here a lot of people worry about airbags and stuff behind these pillars yes rightly so don't put the cable directly over the airbag so just run it across the top edge here just tuck it down enough so it just sits here okay not halfway down here where it's dangling over your airbag I mean, don't get me wrong, if you deploy the airbag on a vehicle, it'll soon move the cable out of the way. If you've ever seen one of those things go off, you'll know what I'm talking about. But, uh, yeah, just pop it down the edge, finish tucking it up on top of your window screen, down here, and then follow it down, all the way, down the edge. Okay, so it just sits neatly out of the way. Obviously now, put your rubber seal back on, and it's just a, a push fit, nice and easy, follow it all the way down. Okay, so coming around to the end of the dashboard where we remove the plastic panel, this is where you're going to find your earthing point. Remove the screw that comes from here, it's a little cross head one, yeah. Take that out, there's a, basically a metal plate behind it, this metal plate that holds the dashboard, ideal earthing spot. Get your earthing cable. Now it's only got a little horseshoe on it, they're not very strong so I tend to snip them off and put a ring terminal on it, but that's personal preference, you don't have to. Obviously put that to the earthing point and put the screw back in. And there we are. Earth point done. Now obviously you can use a different earth, it's up to you. If you think you find a better one, fair enough. Earthing point done. Power cable run down the edge to sort of this location, ready to get to the fuse box. And then we'll test which fuse we need for the ignition switched. Okay, so on this particular car, we have determined that the 15 amp fuse here, which is actually, I believe, the uh, 12 volt socket, it's a great lighter socket fuse, is ignition switched. With the ignition off, we have zero volts. There we go. And with the ignition on, we have, as expected, the 12 volts. So that one on this particular car is an excellent fuse to use. Obviously with the spec of your car and year of your car this may vary so uh, make sure you do check and use a meter or a screwdriver to check that. And there we go. Fuse spur plugged in and just basically pop the wire out the top of the little trim here and you've got space to tuck all your excess cable in in there once you've tidied it all up. Don't do that until you've tested your camera. You may also need a 15 amp normal mini blade fuse because these are the small stubby fuses when you pull them out and they will not go into the top of the spur. We'll now try the camera. So with camera up in place, we've just dummy fitted this up just to test the power side of it. I will just say most cameras come with two mounts, okay, a suction mount and a 3M sticky mount. If you mount it to the actual glass, the suction mount normally works fine. If however, you've got this black textured sort of painted surface on your window screen you're going to need to use the sticky mount the 3m mount because the suckers don't stick to them very well try and keep it out of window screen wiper area because obviously it'll fail the mot um you know you need to keep it away from the sweep area as much as possible so it's not obscuring plug your power cable in and then switch your ignition on and see if it fires up ignition on and there we go powers up as expected You'll have a little battery symbol at the bottom when you finish setting it up. Normally it'll have a zigzag through it showing you that the item is getting power. Um, the batteries are only there for sort of parking mode, etc. Just switch off again. It will need to charge the battery for a couple of hours on a new camera. Bear that one in mind. 
Just lastly regarding the fuses. I touched on earlier when we were looking at the fuse box the fact that your car more than likely is fitted with this style, the stubby style of fuse, yeah? Now obviously your fuse spur will plug in, no problem. It sits slightly higher than the original fuse, but that's not an issue. But you're going to need to replace this 15 amp that you've pulled out, or 8 amp, or 10 amp, whatever you've pulled out of the fuse box to use, with a full-size bayonet fuse. Now they're all colour-coded, so for example, blue ones are 15 amp, red one here, 10 amp, etc. Let's get the same one. It's exactly the same width, yeah, metal pins. It will fit in just fine. So where have you pulled that from? That's your original manufacturer fuse. You put your fuse spur in, and then you're going to want one of those to fit into your fuse spur, aren't you? Because you can't plug that into your fuse spur because it hasn't got metal pins sticking down like that one has. Yeah. Nice and simple, but I just thought I'd mention it just in case it's a bit confusing. There are deviants of fuses left, right and centre. At this point in the video, it's time for me to mention, obviously, if you're worried about doing this job in any way, shape or form, please consult a specialist, pay somebody to do the job. They are insured if they break your vehicle and obviously you will get it repaired. If you break it yourself, you're going to have to pay for it. And in that, I am in the held no way liable or responsible for damage to your vehicle or injury to yourself. If you've got any questions about this vehicle or any others, please pop them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them for you. Thank you very much for watching and goodbye for now.